Hello, everyone. Welcome to OCN. We're glad to have you join us, and I'm glad to be able to present to you Getting Spiritual Updates. You say, Jack, what are you talking about? Well, <clears throat> I'm talking about something like computer language. Yes, you all have computers, and I do too. And so we need to get spiritual updates regularly in order to carry out what God has put us on this earth to do. Let's uh, start by turning over to Colossians 3.10. Colossians 3.10. And so, folks, you can look at God's Word and get your spiritual updates there and also in prayer from, uh, to the Father. <clears throat> Colossians 3.10. And have put on the new... Well, let's start with 3.9. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man and his deeds, and have put on the new man that is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Now, what are we talking about here? Uh, I'm going to just do a little bit from the last half hour. Turn over to Colossians uh, par pardon me, 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says there, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation, or creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And so, we are actually a new species in the earth. No longer homo sapiens, which means human being, it means actually wise man. Sapiens, Latin word for wise. Homo, the word for man. Wise man. That is all human beings, except those who have received Jesus as Savior and Lord. They have become a new creature. They have become a new species in the earth called Homo Theos. God man. The God man. That's right. And so we've taken too dim a view of ourselves. We've said, oh, we can't do much. We're under the devil, under his reign. And, and uh, even though the Bible says otherwise, we feel sometimes like, oh, we, we're sick in body, sick in mind. Our soul is worried and so forth and so on. Folks, we live too low. We live far below the station that God made for us and what we can do in Christ Jesus. And so let's, let's pull ourselves out of that stupor. I almost said stupid, but it means a, a stupor is a, is a trance. Take yourself out of the worldly trance that you're in and take yourself into the Word of God, which tells us our true destiny and who we really are in Christ. Now, the new man, it says, is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Folks, we're not talking about worldly knowledge here. We're talking about spiritual knowledge of God, knowledge of, of the Father, knowledge of Jesus, knowledge of the Holy Spirit. How does the Trinity act? How do they feel? What pleases them? What don't they like? That's who we're talking about when we say knowledge, we're talking about knowledge of God, knowledge of the mighty creator of the universe and the creator of the new man in Christ Jesus. Now how do you get that renewal in knowledge? There's no other way than by spending time with him. You can spend time in two different ways. You can spend time in this Word of God, which tells you a lot about God. And as you ask Him, He'll reveal even more. And what I ask you to do is, don't just read the Word, but take a verse or two and meditate the Word. Think about it. Turn it over in your minds. 
say, what does this really mean? Father, help me. How does this verse apply to me? What should I do? And then wait for his answer. Wait on him. If you wait on the Lord, you renew your strength, Isaiah said. You'll mount up with wings like eagles. You'll run and not be weary and walk and not faint. Now that pertains to the old man, your body. But we're the new man, new in our spirit. We have a brand new spirit like God's. So that's one way you can find out about God, is from the Word. The other way is to spend time in prayer with Him. And folks, I want to tell you that when I say spend time in prayer, I don't just mean talking. I think we talk too much. God already knows our situation. He already knows how we think. He knows what we like, what we don't like. He knows how we think. He knows our, our desires. He knows everything about us. Yes, I spend my time in prayer, usually, most of the time, praying for other people and for God's will to be done on the earth in various nations. Just uh, a few weeks ago, coming back from a friend's house in the countryside, the Lord asked me to begin praying for the Arabic-speaking nations. He said, I want you to pray for them one by one. Well, there are 11 Arabic-speaking nations in Asia and 10 in North Africa. And so I began praying for them and identifying how many people in each of those countries speak Arabic. In certain ones, the whole population does. In most of them, that's true. And then later on, God said to me, in another prayer time when I was just waiting on him, he said, I'd like you to investigate how the Arab science has changed the world. Look at their great poets. Look at their musicians. He said, I want you to begin to appreciate them for what they have contributed to humanity. And he said, he said to me, in this manner, you will get to love them and appreciate them for who they really are. He said, I made them a great race. Most people don't know who they are. Most people only have a surface contact with them. I want you to go deeper. And so I'm doing that. Hallelujah. That's how you can learn to pray for a people. Pray that they come into the knowledge of God, the true knowledge of the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me, but by me. That's right. Now, time spent with God renews our knowledge of God. Time spent with him just listening with your spiritual ears, not your physical ears. And in a few minutes, I'll describe how to do that. Time spent with God renews us in the knowledge of God. Even if we don't hear his voice, even if we don't feel his presence, just like a computer update. You know, when you get an update, supposing there is a new antivirus uh, or a, a new update to your antivirus program, well, that'll take place automatically even though you're unaware of it. That's right. It updates your antivirus, which means it doesn't destroy what you had, it adds to. When they find out there's a new virus, then they put a new blocker in there that blocks it from your computer. But you need to have it added to your computer. You didn't know about the virus but the antivirus company did, so they will update you, and you don't even know it. Now, when you 
go away for a while, say a week or two, get back to your computer at home, your antivirus program needs to be updated. Now you know you've missed several of the updates, so you need to have an overall update, and that's what you do. Now you know you need it, and you get one. It only it takes a few minutes. <clears throat> now, your computer has to be turned on in order to receive it. It has to be turned on. That corresponds to spending time with God. That's right. When you turn your computer on at home, you can get the updates automatically. And when you're spending time with God, you get spiritual updates, some automatically. That's right. You don't even know it. You can't feel it. You can't detect it. But you are receiving from God because you're valuing him. You're taking time for him. You're saying, God, I value you so much. You are my life. You're my everything. And I know that you want to give to me. I know that because that's your heart of love. And even as I'm not talking to you, but waiting on you, you're filling me with some more knowledge of you and of your will in my life. And you're going to realize that later at another time when you aren't even thinking of God. Those updates come up in your spirit man and go to your mind and oh you start thinking about them in a new way thinking about God in a new way that's how God gives you some revelation you have to turn your computer on you have to tune it to his channel so to speak <laughs> and so sometimes he'll actually talk to you and give you an update, you can hear the words in your spirit because you communicate with God. He is a spirit, and he communicates his spirit to your spirit. Now, how to get it up to your mind so that you can hear it and evaluate it? You, worry will block it every time. Fear will block it. It's like you have a connection between your spirit man in the middle of your body and your mind, but it has to be a clean channel. Sin or fear, which is sin actually, will corrupt that and block the channel. But if you have a clear channel, you'll be able to hear those words in your mind. That's your soul. Your soul, uh, mind is a part of your soul. Your mind, your emotions, and your will are all parts of your soul. So you'll hear those words of God. And that is what he desires. Then, if you have a question, you could ask him something, a question. But let me explain something, please. Don't take offense at this. But you cannot ask God the reason that he is doing this. You can't say, why, God? Why did you give this to me? Why, God, did you take my friend home? Why did he die? Why this? Why that? He'll not answer that question because you're questioning his sovereignty. You're questioning his judgment. We are not to question the judge of the whole earth. He is a good judge. He's a righteous judge. He does it for our good. And he does it for the good of the, the person who died. His good, not his evil. So we don't question. We can ask God the questions, what shall I do? Where do I go? When shall I start? How shall I go about this that you asked me to do? All those questions are valid. And he'll answer those one at a time. He may not give you the complete answer because God is a God who knows what we can take and what we can't take. He'll give you enough so that you can take the next step. Some 
people, if they got too much, in fact, probably all of us, if we got too much, we would freak out. We wouldn't be able to do what God wants us to do. So he'll reveal it to you a piece at a time. But you, that piece that he reveals is enough for you to take the next step. Hallelujah. Turn over once to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 12. I have never heard anyone preach on this verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 12. A very, very important verse. It says, for wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the ex excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to them that have it. Let me read that again. For, wis for wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom gives life to those that have it. Well, wouldn't you, some uh, people say, well, I'd rather have wisdom than knowledge. No, you wouldn't. People put down knowledge so much. But I don't. I think it's wrong. This verse says that if you don't have knowledge, wisdom cannot give you life through that knowledge. Let me give you an analogy here. <clears throat> A car corresponds to knowledge. Gasoline for the car corresponds to wisdom. You can take a can of gas in your hands, gasoline, and you aren't going anywhere, anywhere. But if you have a car, and then you take the gasoline, you can pour the gasoline into the gas tank, now you can go somewhere. Now you can use your car. So wisdom, the gasoline, <clears throat> gives power to those that have knowledge. Hallelujah. Turn over to Colossians 3, verse 9. Colossians 3, verse 9. I think we just read that. <laughs> Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. The old man is the man, homo sapiens, that we used to be. That's the person before Christ Jesus. That old man's thinking has to be dumped. It needs a computer dump. And we need to have a new, a restructured thinking. We need to get a new, uh, what do they say? Uh, a new structure of thinking, a new program, a new, yes, a new short computer program which tells us how to think in this new, uh, with a new man's spirit that we are. And as we renew our soul in with the Word of God, how do we Think. How must we restructure our thinking? Must we do it by logic and reason? That's the way the old man used to do it. But the new man doesn't do it that way. The new man does it with the Word of God, obeying the Word, and getting updates from the Father in prayer. That's how he does it. The old man's thinking is traditional, using logic to reason. Putting on the new man is hearing from God and obeying what he says. Now, how do you do this? Well, you get your soul quiet, and you ask God to speak to you, and spend at least 30 minutes listening while focusing on him and on his kingdom. Do any of you value the Lord enough to spend 30 minutes 
without asking him things, it's important that we listen to him. His words are much more important than ours are. He already knows our needs. Listen to what he has for us. Sometimes he'll give us the key to a problem that we've been struggling with for a while, a week or two or more. He'll give us the key, what to do. Then all we have to do is obey. Do the key, and you'll find that problem is solved, is gone away. Hallelujah. What does the Bible say about the knowledge of God? Colossians 1, verse 9, we're still in Colossians. Colossians 1, verse 9 says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Well, by spending time with God, you can find out his will, knowledge of his will. Remember, this isn't worldly knowledge now. This is knowledge of God. God has a will for each one of us. But that will is seasonal, and he'll reveal to you what is right for you at this time, what he has for you at this time, what's good for you. He'll reveal that. <clears throat> John 17, verse 3 is another scripture, John 17, verse 3. You know, the scripture is just wonderful because when you search it out like this, you'll find a lot about the Lord. Verse 3 says, Jesus is praying here. This is his, uh, what's called his high priestly prayer before he goes to the cross. Verse 3 says, This is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So what is eternal life? Knowing God and Jesus. Knowledge of God and Jesus is eternal life. It's not just knowing that he exists. Yes, there's a God. That's fine. That's the first step. What about that God? What's he like? What is he like? What is... What pleases him? What makes him angry? You got to know him. Then he knows you, and you can communicate, you can fellowship, like having coffee together or tea together or a drink together of water, not alcoholic. <laughs> but you can, you can fellowship together. You can hear him, ask him a question. Wait for his answer. Ask him, is there anything else you want to say, Lord? And then, before you just walk away, ask him, Lord, may I be released? Or do you have something else? He's a great king. You always ask to be released from his presence before you, you, you get up and go. That's why you should be in a quiet place where there's no distraction. 2 Peter 1, verse 3 to 5. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to 5. This is a key right here. 2 Peter 1. There we go. Verse 3. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through what? The knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, by which are given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. It's knowledge of God. Very important. So, 
That's how we partake of the divine nature of God. That's exactly how we partake of his nature, is through knowledge of him. And it can only be acquired by reading the word and in prayer, listening, listening prayer. That will give you knowledge of God. That will give you spiritual updates. That will cause you to be conformed to the divine nature. That's right. And that's how God downloads a new program to us, we'll say. That's how he downloads to us things to help us, things that, that we need, that we don't even know we need. God knows, and he'll download to us exactly what we need. And then he'll explain what he has done. Hallelujah. Look over at Proverbs 1.7. It says, let me quote it to you. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The very beginning of knowledge is to fear him. If you don't have that, you have no knowledge at all of God. It's the beginning of knowledge to fear the Lord. Proverbs 9, verse 10 says, Knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So you know, the more you get to know God, know who he is, know how he responds, how he thinks, how he feels, the more you know him, the more you will have understanding, understanding of things in the world, more understanding of how to apply the knowledge he, of him to problems which we encounter here. Proverbs 12, verse 1 says, Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. Again, knowledge of God. If you don't want to be taught, you can't learn about God because you have refused. You refuse to learn. But if you love instruction, love teaching so that you'll know how to prosper, how to live, how to do this or that, right? then you need knowledge of God. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 18, verse 15 says, The heart of the prudent gets knowledge. The ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Are you prudent? Do you look for knowledge of God? Does your ear seek out knowledge? If it does, you're a wise person. Now Ephesians 4:13 gives us one more. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So, the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God brings us to the fullness of the stature of Christ. Fullness of the, of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What viruses prevent or corrupt spiritual updates? Distraction of thoughts, telephone calls or smartphone beeps, worry, which is sin, discouragement, and unbelief. If you think this last half hour I've been speaking to you is all poppycock, then you'll never get to know God because you won't seek him. I want to pray for you for a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who hear my voice. I pray that they seek you, they spend time with you, that they deem this time not wasted, but time very valuable, 
Open their spiritual ears to hear. Open their hearts, Lord, to receive from you. Let them use the, re the knowledge of you that they receive to do wonders and signs and miracles in the earth. And I thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for the homo theos that you have made us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord.